Hey, y'all. Hello. Hello. All right, everybody. Just so you know, as you're coming on, we are also streaming on Facebook on our private group. So people can watch it on there or in here and uh, whichever one they prefer. Some people can't quite figure out the Zoom and that's okay. Um, so this where we can talk and you can share if you have any prayer requests or they can just go on Facebook Live and watch it. But I don't really, if you're watching this on Facebook Live, I don't really have a way besides opening the video, I don't really have a way to read all of your prayer requests and everything. So that's gonna be a little difficult. So we will uh, just go kind of with who we got here and um, hopefully everybody else is joining us on Facebook. Hope everybody's doing well. Thank you for once again, your flexibility for all of you. I know it's changes and kind of going back a step, but you know, we, we did have quite a few people in our church um, that got tested for COVID. And I was telling uh, Diane earlier, the good news is none of those have come back positive. They were all negative. But there is one person in our church, um, Brandon Gillum. We need to be praying for him. He has COVID and he got very sick. I believe it was yesterday and had to go to the hospital. So I have not heard today. Um, I guess that's good news, but I, I did text them and try to find out if he's doing better, uh, but need to, to pray for him. But everybody else has been negative, so I guess that's um, really good news. But I did have a couple of prayer requests to share with everybody tonight that's here, and then we'll see if any, any of you have, have a prayer request. And I might be able to switch over and see if you have one, you can put it in the comments. Uh, on Facebook, I can actually, yes, I can read the comments. So if you have something you want us to pray for, um, just type it there. Uh, James Wheelis got a good report yesterday on his cancer. Um, it um, had shrunk a little bit. And so we're grateful for that. And he thanked everybody for their prayers and everything. Uh, Jill Thompson been to our church now for, for quite a while. Um, she fractured a bone in her shoulder and is hoping that she will not have to have surgery as it looks right now. It might heal by itself, and that's what we're praying will happen, but just need to be praying for her. Casa Phelps wanted us to pray for Justin Ryder. I believe is his name, R-I-G-H-T-E-R. -E uh, he has an infection in his brain that's affecting his speech and movements. And so just need to be praying for him. And then of course, Brandon Gillum's on my list here uh, as he's in the hospital. If you have a prayer request and you're on here, if you're on Zoom, we'll just take that first. Just raise your hand if I can see you, if you have one and I'll unmute you. Since we are on Facebook Live as well, we wanna make sure, we'll start with Jessica Massey. So in church a couple Jordan. of times, we brought up my sister-in-law's mother um, her name is Kathleen. She's been struggling with cancer for three years and it got really, really bad a couple weeks ago and they gave her four weeks to live, but now it's looking like even less than that. She's got one or two, maybe two weeks left. Um, so my family's just trying to support her and be there for her. Okay. So that's Kathleen is her name. Young and her. <laughs> Thank you. I think Jackie had her hand up. Let me hold on, Jackie. I'm trying to unmute you here. You might have to do it yourself. Um, hold on. There you go. Um, my friend Connie Smith lost her son, Mike Smith Jr. this week. Um, I think he was 46 years old, 46 years old. And um, and um, Mrs. Harris, um, Kylie's great grandmother, just got in the hospital yesterday with heart failure. She's 89, which you, you've met Miss Harris before. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. Those two. Us. Okay. All right. Thank you, Jackie. Anybody else that's in the Zoom meeting have have anything? Okay. Did um, Keith, was your hand raised? I couldn't tell. I saw a hand go up somewhere. Okay. 
Uh, Kayla wanted to add Grace Lawrence to the prayer list. She's over here on my shoulder. Her family has um, positive for COVID, so just need to be praying for them. All right, let me switch over to Facebook and see if there's any requests over there. So far, no, just people saying hello. Um, if anybody has any there, go ahead and type it now, and we will get those. Just give it a second. I think it's up to date. All right, I'll try to check it at the end too and see if we missed any, okay? So I want to read a passage of scripture and then pray. So if you have your Bibles, um, I, I normally read whatever Psalm it is for whatever day. I know I've told you that like a million times, but I was gonna tell it to you again. And um, I always like to read you know, whatever day matching the Psalm. And then of course there's more Psalms. So you can double it once you've already gone through it one time. Um, but today's Psalm 24 and it's a beautiful passage about the King of glory. And I'm sure you've heard uh, quite a bit of this passage before. And so I just wanted to, to share it with you before we pray. It says the earth and everything in it, the world and its inhabitants belong to the Lord. For he laid its foundation on the seas and established it on the rivers. Who may ascend the mountain of the Lord? Who may stand in his holy place? The one who has clean hands and a pure heart, who has not appealed to what is false and who has not sworn deceitfully. He will receive blessing from the Lord and righteousness from the God of his salvation. Such is the generation of those who inquire of him who seek the face of the God of Jacob. And I pray that that is our generation, that we are a generation who seeks the face of the God of Jacob. Uh, then it says in verse seven, you probably remember this, if you like classical music, the Messiah, uh, one of the songs of the Messiah deals with this passage right here. Lift up your heads, you gates, rise up ancient doors, that the King of glory will come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, you gates, rise up ancient doors. Then the king of glory will come in. Who is he, this king of glory? The Lord of armies, he is the king of glory. And what a beautiful, what some beautiful words from David from Psalm 24 about our king. And so let's go ahead and pray and then we'll get into our, our Bible study uh, very shortly tonight. Uh, as we continue to study our book that we've been doing. And so let's go ahead and pray for these. Father, we're grateful for this night. We thank you for this time that we can assemble as a church on Zoom and Facebook. And, and Father, things have changed even in the last few weeks that we've had to go back to this medium. And uh, Father, I just pray that you would bless it. Um, I pray that we'd be able to reach out, Lord, to our community through uh, technology during these days. And Father, we just thank you, Lord, as this passage says, you are the king of glory. And Lord, may we lift up our heads and may we be that generation that seeks your face, O oh God of Jacob. Lord, we want to search for you. We want to share with this generation what they're missing. And it is the king of glory. And so, Father, I, I just pray that you would embolden us. I pray that you would make us faithful witnesses for you uh, to a lost and dying world who needs so desperately to hear about the gospel of Jesus Christ. And Father, we pray for these tonight. We thank you for James Wheelis's good report on his cancer. And Lord, we just continue to pray for him as he seeks treatment. I pray for Jill Thompson as she fractured the bone in her shoulder. I pray that that would heal on its own and she would not have to have surgery. I pray for Justin Ryder who has this infection in his brain that's affecting his speech and his movement. Scott, I pray that you would if it be your will, that you would take that away. But Father, we never want to pray for anything that's that's out of what your will is. And so Father, we pray in accordance with that. I pray for Brandon uh, Gillum as he was in the hospital yesterday and is battling COVID. And I pray that you keep Malia and Eden safe as well. Uh, I pray for Kathleen, Jessica's uh, sisters, or sister-in-law's mother. Lord, as she ends the road here of, of this life, I pray that you would give her dying grace and strength during this time. I pray for Connie Smith who lost her son. 
uh, Lord, and the difficulties that I'm sure she's going through with that. I pray for Miss Harris, Kylie's great grandma, Lord, she's in the hospital. I pray that you would give her strength. And then, Lord, we pray for Grace Lawrence as well. Lord, we pray for so many who have been affected by this virus and the sickness. And uh, God, we look forward to a day uh, when King Jesus returns and sets up his kingdom. And Lord, there will be no more sickness or pain or death. Because uh, your word says in the book of Revelation, the former things have been done away with. And so, Father, we look forward to that day when all of those things are gone and everybody can live in harmony and peace. But until that day, I pray that you would give us strength. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. Well, um, we have been studying for three weeks now. If you haven't been here, this little book right here, Tom Rayner, Becoming a Welcoming Church. And you can really pick up at any point. So this is your first time watching the, the Wednesday night Bible study. It's a great time to pick it up. And uh, we normally on Wednesday nights go verse by verse through a book of the Bible. We just uh, finished First Peter a couple of weeks ago. Uh, but we had a kind of a little break here and uh, wanted to do something a little bit different. And this is just a very short book by Tom Rayner, who used to be the president of Lifeway. Uh, Christian Resources. He was a pastor, and he does a lot of stats on churches and things like that. And and as we talked about this, I'll kind of fill you in if you haven't been here the last few weeks. We we do believe that our church is a welcoming church, okay? But there is always room for improvement. And the only way a church is going to be welcoming is if the people who are in the church are welcoming. And so that's what it talks about here. And I know that some of you have been challenged, especially that first Sunday um, that we were inside. We were doing this study, and we heard about somebody last week that felt convicted by the study to go and speak to a visiting family. And, and so I think that this has a, a, a lot um, of impact, and, and it's very practical, but just talks about looking at our church from the outside in. And so these are all mostly members or regular attenders who are on our Facebook because um, it's just in the private group. It's not in the public group and then on our Zoom. So as we look at chapter three, um, he begins to talk about, as we talk about and think about becoming a welcoming church, he begins to talk about um, that you need good directions when you come to church of where to go. And, and I think this is something that our church, Maple Springs, uh, can definitely work on is making sure that people know. So you can imagine if you showed up to our uh, church and this is your first time and we, we talked last week, we had an open forum and let some people share about their first experience when they came to Maple Springs. Some of them just a couple months ago, some of them a couple years ago, but let them share what their experience was like. And uh, we all know how um, scary that can be going to a new church and not knowing anybody and, you know, trying to find where everything's at. And, you know, us as regular church attenders, we know where everything's at, right? We know where the bathrooms are. We know where the, the fellowship hall is. We tell, I tell people sometimes, well, go over there to the fellowship hall. And they're like, the what? They don't even know what the words fellowship hall mean. And so, you know, making sure you have good signage. And so he, he talks here about five myths on the bottom of 36, and I say that because some people purchased a copy of the book and are going through it with us, five myths about church signage and websites. So Clay, I hope that you're listening well. Clay does a great job. Our website is super. Uh, MapleSpringsBaptist.com, if you've not been on there, Clay does a great job getting stuff up there. But here's some myths about church signage and websites. Number one, Myth number one, everyone knows where our church is. There's myth number one. If you tell people Maple Springs Baptist Church, even if they live in Lewisburg, we assume that they know where that's at. And I have learned as the pastor, because I try to invite people to our church, most people say, where is that located at? And I've had people that have visited from Lewisburg drive right past the church. Some people see it. Some people never did. So don't assume that everybody knows where our church is. Myth number two. Uh, and this might be our church. Our church is small. We don't need signs for people to get around. That's a myth, okay? We think that we're a smaller sized church. We don't need signs that direct people where to go. And that's, that's definitely not true. Myth number three, 
Church websites are really not that important. That's a myth for sure. In the day and age that we live in, um, electronics, unfortunately, is king for good or bad, and we can either use it for good or bad. But he talks about here that most people visit your website before they ever come to your church. And I can say as one that um, spent, before I came to, to, to Maple Springs, I was looking for a church. I went to the church websites before I ever walked on the campus. And if the website was not appealing or they didn't have updated information, we skipped right on by. So having an updated website is so important, and I thank God that we have that. And if you haven't checked it out, maplespringsbaptist.com, there might be some of you that enjoy doing website stuff and can help Clay. I'm sure he would never turn down any help that he can get. Myth number four, it's easy to get around in our church, and that's, that's definitely not true as well. Um, you try to tell somebody, just head to the basement and then try to share with them where the basement's at <laughs> and watch their face as they are completely confused as to where they're supposed to go. I just say head towards the dungeon. You'll smell it before you see it. Uh, then myth number five, signs and websites are human-centered methodologies. They are not central to the gospel. So some people say, well, we don't need signs. We don't need websites because that's not about the gospel. And his point is neither are air conditioners or heating units, but we have them. So they are important because they help facilitate an atmosphere for people to hear the gospel. And he talks about on page 39, if you're following along, the good church signage is a statement of your church's hospitality, that you care about visitors. And our church, I do believe, cares about guests and cares about visitors. And, and I want to continue to be a place that uh, cares about our visitors and our guests. And so uh, if you do notice around our facility, we do have in some strategic places, some signs pointing in different direction so that visitors will know where to go. But it's so important for, for you all as church members that if you see somebody come in and listen, in our church, it seems like every week we have somebody visiting. There's always a visiting family. If you see them, help them get their bearings. Show them where the restrooms are. Show them um, where to go for the sanctuary. Because we have people come in during the summer, and they come in that middle building, and they're not sure where to go. And so show them the signage and, and where they can go. And so we try to do that. But a good church signage is a statement of your church's hospitality. And then um, he begins to talk about church signage a little bit that I think is important for us to note as um, believers. Um, first of all, signage is not for members. Us as members, we know where everything is, okay? If, you, if I told most of you go to the mop closet at the church, a lot of you would know exactly where that is. The signage is not for church members. It's for guests that come to our church. He talks about quality signage is important to make sure that you have good quality um, signs around your church. Then he talks about the primary external church sign is also very important. And I'm thankful we do have our church sign, but we also have that big sign that has the letters on it um, that says, that said for a while that we were back inside, now just says, please check our website because, or in our Facebook for service details because it changes so much. I don't want to have to change the sign or get Lynn to change the sign every time something different happens. Uh, he talks about the parking lot should have clear signage, uh, guest parking spots. Hey, we're on top of that. We got three guest parking spots. Hopefully, if you were a guest, you found them. Um, there should be clear signage pointing to the entry point or entry points of the church. That might be something we could do better at um, is being able to point people towards the entrance, which most people know where the sanctuary is, and we have people outside that helps. Uh, he says the two must signs are handicapped and guest parking. And I thank God that we've got both of those out there so we can check that one off. Um, internal signage must have three basic characteristics, good quality, readable font, and right height so that people can read it. I've, I've been to a church before that had the signage in, in a font that you couldn't even read. Uh, you know, we don't want it in Hebrew or Greek. We want clearly for people to know. Uh, it should communicate an attitude of hospitality it should be helpful for guests and for the church. 
and church signage should be should conduct a um we should always conduct an audit at least once a year to look at our church signage and i think that's something that we can do um but the one thing that really came out of this um on page 43 for some of you that are going along with me um is how many people looked at a church website before they ever even came to church. They said approximately seven out of 10 first time guests uh, checked out the church's website. So when they come to our church, when guests come to our church, and I'm just speaking to the church body right now, they already have somewhat of a picture of our church before they ever even step on the campus. Then we talked about last week, and, and some of you are joining us maybe on Facebook, and this is your first time hearing about this, most people have decided before the service even starts if they're ever going to come back or not. So that is why we're doing this study to make sure that our church, that we all, because we are the church, the church is not the buildings. I hope, listen, I hope that if there's one thing that's come out of COVID, the one thing that's come out of this is that the church is not about the buildings. Okay, the buildings are important and we need them. We're building a new building, why? because buildings are important, but they're not essential. The only thing that is essential in the church of Jesus Christ is the gospel of Jesus Christ. And so churches, um, I think they put too much stress uh, on the buildings. Listen, we are the church. If God forbid tomorrow I texted or emailed all of you and I said, bad news, overnight the church buildings burnt to the ground. Maple Springs Baptist Church would still be in existence. Why? Because it's us. The Bible never, not once, talks about the church is a building. A church, an ecclesia, is a group of people. And we're only going to move forward with the gospel, and we're only going to be a welcoming church as much as each one of us that's in the church is welcoming. And so the reason that we're doing this is we want to be, now we don't want to go to the other extreme. We talked about that last week where people can't do anything except there's so many people attacking them. We don't, we don't want to attack guests, but we want to give a welcoming experience. And if you're watching this, obviously you care about our church and you want our church to be a welcoming atmosphere. And so these are some important things that we can put into place um, signage, but also as you see people, and I've seen people come in with that confused or dazed look on their face. They don't know where to go. You've never seen them before. It's obviously their first time. Come alongside of them and help them know where to go. And I think through that, we will what? Become a welcoming church. So that's the next chapter. I did it really short. Um, there's more there that you can read about websites, Clay, that you can read. Um, and the next chapter deals with making sure that your church is safe and that your nursery areas are clean. And so, like I said, this is only six weeks. We're halfway through it, but just talking about how important it is to be a welcoming church. And, and we heard from a lot of people last week that were it kept coming to our church. Why? Because the people were so friendly and welcoming. And then we heard uh, a story of somebody that actually came to our church because they found our church website. And uh, they're actually in the Zoom meeting right now, so I don't know if they're listening to me or not, but uh, they came to our church because of the church website. They, they um, looked us up and found us. So you might not think those things are important, but in the day in which we live, those things are very important. That does not mean they're essential. Our church can survive without a website because we have the gospel, but they are important. And so we want to put them into practice, and we want to do everything to the best of our ability to God's glory. Amen? I mean, shake your head if you agree with that. We want to do everything to the best of our ability to God's glory. I, I just don't ever, as your pastor, want to do something cheap or, or want to do something that is, is just not good. Why? Because we're not doing it for us. We're doing it for the Lord. And uh, I just want our church to continue to be known as a place where people can come and feel welcome. That does not mean, we talked about last week, that does not mean that we allow every type of sin in the door and we don't say anything about it. No, we will preach on sin and we will preach on repentance, but we want to be a loving congregation. And we already are, but no church has ever reached the level that we need to reach. And we won't until Jesus returns, but we can continue to work on that. Okay, let's pray together. Father, 
We thank you for this night. We thank you for this time we've been able to spend together. And Father, once again, help us uh, to become that welcoming church that we need to be. Thank you for this short time that we've been able to get together for this study. Father, help us as we continue to study this little book. It's uh, just got some great truths packed into it and some things that we don't think about sometimes uh, because we're members and we're not visitors and we're not thinking in the visitor mindset anymore. But Father, we know that your gospel is for every single person every race, male and female, every age, Lord, the gospel is for everybody, and we as your church have a commission to be reaching everybody, and so Father, help us to be a welcoming group of people uh, that care about people and their needs, and it's in Jesus' name we pray, amen. Let me make sure that I did not miss any prayer concerns. Um, Angela Murray says she had an accident today. Nobody was hurt but I was driving Matt's car and it don't look too good. So we need to pray for Angela uh, for that. And let me see if we have anybody else. I don't see any other prayer requests. So real quick, we'll close, pray for Angela. Father, we pray for Angela. And uh, God, we just, um, we just pray for this accident and Lord, whatever's going on with Matt's car, Lord, I just pray that uh, God, you would just give wisdom in this, and I pray that everybody's okay, and from any residual effects from that, I just pray that there wouldn't be any, and it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. Um, well, I guess we are done. Hope everybody has a great night, and uh, we will plan to see you on Sunday, I guess, for our drive-in service at... Um, 9.30 is the time of the drive-in. It will also be live broadcasted on Facebook, okay? Um, I hope you all do well, and uh, adios. We will see you later. Bye-bye.